Hello everyone, my name is Arpana. I am a trainer at Academy for Benchmarking. Just like our essay videos, we have taken some initiative in shooting some speaking videos for IELTS. So this is a first step in that direction and we have tried to keep the setup as authentic and as close to the exam uh, hall or the exam cabin as possible. So I have with me uh, Dr. Swapnil Kale, he's uh, a colleague and the director of uh, Academy for Benchmarking. He will play the role of an examiner and I'll play the role of an examinee or the candidate. Over to you. Hi, so I'm Dr. Swapnil Kale and I'm the examiner from uh, your ILTS test and I'm through IDP. This session has been recorded so you have to be very loud and clear mm. and very crystal clear with your voice. Sure. If you have any questions, if the question is not very clear, you can ask me to repeat and I will be very happy to repeat again. Sure. Okay, so what's your name? It's Arpana Krishnan. Okay, can I have your passport please? Here it is. Thank you so much. Okay. And where are you from? I'm from Mumbai and uh, specifically a suburb called Mulun. Okay, great. And what do you do? I'm an IELTS uh, trainer, an English trainer for six years. Okay, that's good. So we are here for the IT speaking test which will be connected into three different parts. Your part one will be the introduction part, the part two will be the cue card and part three which is a follow up part. Yeah. So do you have any questions? No. no okay, no. can we start? Sure. Okay, so this session is going to be recorded now so please be loud and clear. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so do you have any favorite flower or a plant? Yes, it has to be our ubiquitous holy basil, which is also called the Tulsi uh, and it is found in most Hindu homes. It requires very little maintenance and it's extremely pious to us. Okay. What kind of flowers and plants grow near where you live? Around my area, because it's comparatively verdant, I, we get to see a lot of uh, jasmine, um, daisy flowers, shoe flowers and also plumeria alba. So these are common flowers found around. Is it important to you to have a flower or a plant in your home? Uh, yes, I think, but given our small houses, even one pot should suffice. So any element of verdure around uh, gives us great joy that whenever we see new uh, leaves or flowers coming up and it gives it shows that we're giving it back to our environment. Okay. Have you ever bought flowers for someone else? Oh yes, in fact, whenever I meet somebody, flowers is the first thing that comes to my mind. So even if I'm meeting a friend after a long time, I get a bunch of flowers. Somebody is recuperating, it's their wedding or someone has to be felicitated. I definitely get a bouquet of flowers because uh, it is said to bring positive energy into the place that they are in. Okay. Which is your favorite season? My favorite season has to be winters. I'm talking of our Mumbai winter where uh, you may require woolens at night at best, daytime barely you require any and you at this is the time you get uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and you don't mind having sweets with clarified butter so you tend to binge and uh, all the prices are very reasonable especially uh, you get spinach and fenugreek leaves only for those two months. What sports are popular in different seasons in your country? Uh, when we talk of summer season, because it's so harsh here, uh, it has to be water sports, so it could be snorkeling, scuba diving, swimming. If it is winter, all outdoor games, so that can include cricket, football, hockey or tennis. Uh, wind, uh, rainy seasons tend to be very unpleasant, there's a lot of slimy soil around, so people are restricted at home, so they tend to play indoor games like chess or carom at best. Okay, perfect. So this is the end of your part 1 of your speaker. Now we'll start with the part 2 that is the cue card. So these are the three cue cards which have been given to you. You have to select one of them. Okay, yeah, here. And you have uh, 30 seconds of time to prepare for this cue card. And then you have, can, you have to speak for uh, 2 minutes. Also you can use this pen, and pen, pen or a pencil with a paper and you can make your notes here. Can I start? So yeah, 30 seconds over. Yes, we can start. Okay, 
So the tourist attraction that I particularly enjoyed visiting would be a temple called Kashinatha Temple in Kanjivaram. Uh, this is a this is a city uh, 75 kilometers away from Chennai, and this temple is the second holiest. Uh, a place in Tamil Nadu as such and the city itself is very holy to South Indians. Um, Kanjivaram has a total of nine temples equally uh, unique and great in their history and uh, importance but this temple that I am going to specify is uh, the Kashinatha temple which is dedicated to Lord Shiva. Uh, externally, you see that uh, it has an inverted cone-like structure flattened at the top. It's called Gopuram, and this entire temple is made of sandstone. This shrine on the left-hand side has plateaued uh, shrines. Uh, various deities, their sculptures can be seen. In the central part, you have this sanctum uh, where you have this linga, which is in the form of a black stone. So, linga is a form of Lord Shiva. As you circumambulate the whole street, uh, place, you see uh, large pillars with different figurines. You get to see loads of uh, reliefs on the walls. So they all depict various stories uh, and episodes that have happened in the medieval past. You get to see how the demons were slayed by the various um, gods and goddesses. Uh, how the deities lived those years and uh, specifically how um, the different incarnations of Lord Shiva contributed in making the world what it is today. Um, I would say that this temple uh, gives a, gives epitomizes a divinity that you don't get to see in most temples. In fact, what is unique about this temple is that it is 1500 years old and it has withstood the dark days of uh, invasion. Uh, we all know that in India was uh, ruled and invaded by loads of foreigners and uh, hundreds of temples were demolished. But this temple has withstood the test of time, it has even withstood natural catastrophes. So I definitely feel that it is a, a pious hand of God that it is still able to attract tourists the world over, not only uh, Indians. And uh, uh, thanks to the government, they have not tried to beautify it by adding color or um, white marbles. It, it is made, it is in that standard rock cut architecture. So it's made from stones. It's not like you uh, have cement and mortar or you sculpt it somewhere and bring it. It's been done there. And I feel that this temple, once you go there, uh, you really enjoy it. And why we went there, it is obviously to pray for the welfare of us. There were 10 of us and I happened to be there four years ago. But I distinctly remember every little place of it and I long to go there. Uh, I definitely recommend everyone to visit this place because it's one in a lifetime experience and uh, you would want to go there with your family. Okay, yes. your time is up. So now can we start with the follow up now? Yeah. Thank you. So what is the most popular tourist attractions in your home country? Um, if I have to talk of India, it has to be our quintessential Taj Mahal where in Delhi you have uh, Kutub Minar, Red Fort and Humayun Tomb. In Bombay you have CST Station, then you have Char Minar, you have the palaces of Rajasthan, Mysore and of course our South Indian temples. Okay. How do the type of tourist attraction that younger people like to visit compared with those that older people like to visit? I feel younger people would like to explore international places um, and they like to go on longer holidays, they would like to go to colder places but the older people because of their frail health they would like to take go on pilgrimages and they would prefer shorter holidays without much uh, stress. Do you agree that some tourist attractions like national museums or galleries should be free for visit? No, I don't think they should be free. Anything that is free is taken for granted. I think there should be a nominal fee collected from every tourist or a visitor because we have to pay monthly uh, salaries to the workers taking care of the place and it also generates funds for renovation. If these places are not renovated periodically, uh, it can just get into a dilapidated state. So I think a fee should be collected. Okay. What are the benefits to individuals of visiting another country as a tourist? Um, the benefits is obviously you get to see their culture firsthand. Of course, you get to see a lot and read a lot, uh, but nothing like experiencing it firsthand, new weather conditions, the language, the cuisine, the food, and you try to empathize and understand why they are like that. It makes you more tolerant and you become more cosmopolitan and modern in outlook. Okay. 
here. How necessary is it for the tourist to learn the language of the country they are visiting? I think it would definitely help, especially if it's going to a non-English speaking country. But yes, it has to be planned at least three months in advance, learn basic sentences, learn the letters. So when you go there, nobody freezes you. You're not, uh, you don't feel cheated and people connect to you easily. They, uh, they understand and uh, they appreciate the fact that you have taken efforts to learn their language, even though it is a broken language and you get to uh, read the sign boards, the names of the shops. So you feel uh, approachable and you don't feel out of place. So I think you must learn that language before you visit. Okay, that's good. So that's the end of your IELTS speaking test. Thank you so much Thank and you. have a great day. You too.